Okay, first thing I do is just move my window here so you can see a little better. Get everything a little more adjusted. Okay, so uh, I've got um, this model I made in Maya, and then I um, brought it into Mudbot. I'm sorry, 3D Coat. I can look at there's the uh, the map, the 3D Code Mate, the UV map. Um, it's very coarse now, you know, very sharp, because it's it's literally the low poly model. What I can do is um, add levels to it. So I want to say add new subdivision level. The same, and that added one. And it's the same thing as if I said shift D, D, D. So I've added four levels. And it's gotten to the point where you really can't even see. Um, there is a, a mesh on there. And I've added so many levels, you really got to zoom in to see how much is... Uh, how fine that mesh is and I need that mesh to give me the opportunity to model things um, and sculpt with with control so I'm gonna go to my sculpt tools and I'm gonna click on sculpt and I'm gonna make a um, indentation to suggest where the uh, second rib would meet the would articulate with the sternum, kind of at the at the juncture between the sternum and um, gladiolus. Okay, and um, I'm trying to move this up and down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my sculpt tool, but I'm going to do a couple things. I don't want to stamp right now because I don't want to put the texture on there, especially since this is the articulating surface. I don't want a texture to suggest like a roughness that would happen from a tendon or a muscle or a tendon or a ligament pulling on the bone. Uh, I'll leave the size about where it is. You can kind of hopefully you can see there's a circle is pretty difficult to see. Um, it's pretty large. Strength I'm going to leave like that. I'm going to ask it to mirror this. Now I brought this out of Maya. Um, and the sternum was um, intentionally placed right on the uh, y-axis. So when I use this in uh, this mirror function x, it gave me that plane. So it's good. whatever I do on this side is going to happen on the other side. I don't want to pull. I want to instead push in. So I'm going to create invert, and I'm going to go up. Zoom in a little bit if I may. And get closer here. And begin to start to indent. Now the harder I push, the more aggressive I get. Now what I can do now is turn this and I can show you where see I've gotten the same effect on the other side. Um, I can make, hold the letter B down, the letter B, and get a smaller area that I can control. With that small B, I'm going to turn off the mirroring and just suggest um, if you will, the juncture between the Manubrium and uh, gladiolus, and I can go even smaller to accentuate a little bit more that that juncture, and then I'll go around. Now I want to go back and mirror again. So what I do here will be there. And it really doesn't hurt if I don't if I keep the mirror on, it's just kind of odd in this case because I am going to make a complete circle around it. Now if I get something that's a little too aggressive, I use the smooth tool and that lets me um, kind of soften or smooth it out a little bit. Okay. 
Same thing here. I don't like that crease, so I'll just soften that edge a little bit and pick up the sculpt tool. This is it, it's almost like pushing um, you know paper to get out of a corner. It's hard to get it not to fold when you want to make a change of direction, so you really kind of have to experiment with it. Now, what I can do now is um, come down, I'm trying to get it to come down. I used to be able to do that. So I want to put this raised surface here. So now I don't want to invert. I want to raise surface. I still want to make it symmetrical, maybe a little bigger. And I can come in. Oops, thought I'd turn that off. Now I see even with that large circle, it still seems to be doing a little too narrow. So I'm going to increase it a little further. So I can get that. Now I can turn this off, the mirror, and then just if I want to build up. Now sometimes what you want to do is uh, add a lot of, you know, a lot of kind of small tight texture. So again, you can use the B tool and um, or the letter B, push down and slide left to right and get a small um, edge that you can then push around a little bit. See, so I'm actually getting a little more, maybe a little bigger. Oh, still on the, wasn't on the sculpt tool, I'm sorry. a little bigger. Hmm, for some reason it stopped giving me what am I doing here? Oh, I'm sorry, the strength got turned down to zero by accident. Not sure how that happened, but let's go back to a smaller B. There we go. Now I'll go even tighter. Try to that's what I was trying to suggest you can make these you know, lines that really reflect the contour, the direction of the, the fibers of the tendon and ligament that would be pulling on this bone. And then to get that a little less mechanical, you might go a little bigger, pull out a little bit more. And then, um, if you want to fade it, I'm going to turn off the mirroring for a second and get a little more right here in the middle. And then if you want to fade that or change what you do, I use the smooth function again. Just soften those transitions so those lines coming out end up looking like they gradually fade back in. The other thing I want to do is maybe um, add this texture now. So I'll keep on the sculpt tool. I'll say use the stamp here. And again, I'll go back to those places where I want roughness because there is tendon and ligament and put that stamp on it. And you see it adds that texture. And then I could go back, take the stamp off and start to build up again these ridges that um, you know represent um, where the where the bone will invert it. Go back to mirroring. Go back in and start adding 
Oops, yeah. You know, start to add the um, the articulation where the the third rib would, and then you know where the fourth rib. And we'll just continue. And again, it's kind of a balance or um, a trial and error how big you want to make it and if you go too big or too rough come back and smooth it and because we had the mirror on I think we got both sides okay so that's you know that's very roughly um, the elements you want to do for the painting so the things that to keep in mind is we use the sculpt tool we varied its size with the letter B we kept the strength pretty much uh, consistent. We turn the mirroring on or off, depending on what we wanted to do. We the sculpt tool pulls out if we wanted to um, instead create a concavity. We used um, the invert function, and if we wanted to add texture to the surface we use the um, stamp tool and I use this but all of these are stamps so you're welcome to experiment with any of these you know I wonder like for example what would this do in terms of adding some texture with this you know maybe again be more of a bone kind of texture and then you can also experiment with the spacing so down here I have the distance of zero what happens if we put the distance at 12 how um, how well does that work for you Okay, so I mean, you you probably want to work on this a little more than I did um, to get the results you want, but I think we've got the fundamentals here.